appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 85. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Very, very special guest in the building for episode 85. Introduce yourself to the audience. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good good afternoon, people. You got your boy CEO Ro in the building, man. Uh, Heartthrob Cleaning Services, LLC. Uh, the CEO Ro experience. And definitely go and follow me on IG at official underscore CEO dot RO. Copy that. Now, you can also catch me on episode five of the CEO Real Experience. Y'all dive back into those archives, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and let me know what you think. Now, let's hit the rundown. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. 2 o'clock on the GFT Radio Network every Tuesday, Wednesday, 216 The Blend. That is 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. WTNUPhilly.com, Thursdays at 1230. I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. on Fridays. And the THC Media, 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Sunday, still wide open, looking to fill in that slot. Custom Hustle World, Custom Hustle World on Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. That is my clothing line. Custom jerseys, jackets, T-shirts, uh, sweatsuits. We got the basketball, baseball, hockey, and football jerseys all in. You get at me, we will customize the situation. If you want your own stuff with your own logo, customize. We can make that happen. It will cost you extra. Uh, H2H Cleaning, at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. It is a tri-state area situation, but if you make it work, my wild, we will slide up on you. Roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, carpeting, and flooring. You need anything to happen, we can make that happen. Uh, now, this is episode 85. Shouts out to my bro. You on the live, watching the video, you see what the t-shirt is. He's one of these guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, they won. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Bro, he asked me, bro. first thing he asked me on his show was, damn, when did we meet each other? When he got off the plane. Yeah. So, <laughs> episode 85, this here is my brother, my real brother here. Now, I mean, not to say that nobody else ain't my brother, but, you know, copy that. You know, this is my guy. <laughs> yeah. CEO Ro, what brings out the best in you? Oh, man, it's it's a few things, man, that bring out the best in me, man. Um, Tackle them one at a time then, baby. But one at a time, um, I would start with adversity. Adversity brings the best out of me. When I'm met with like a challenge, um, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a do I'm a guy that is a, a thinker. I'm a, I'm gonna get through it. I'm a, I'm gonna find a way to get through it. You feel me? Um, so that that definitely motivates me um, through, especially through all the bullshit and what we've been through growing up and, and now in life. You feel what I'm saying? Um, Ah, I would say, let me see, let me, because I got a few of them I'm trying to get. I would, well, hold I, up, we, we'll, we'll ping, we'll ping pong it. We'll one at a time. It, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to go rush to give us a whole queen just yet. Um, <laughs> the thing I'm gonna tell you that brings the best out of me is the hustle. It's the work. It's the grind. It's all of the shit that we do. Uh, I never look at none of this shit like work. Anytime somebody hit me and say, damn, hype, what's up with you? Busy as always. Busy is a good thing. If I'm busy, that means we got money that is being made. That means we have things going on that are positive. If I tell you I ain't got nothing going on, I'm miserable because, like, I got to have shit going on. I got to be doing something. I got to be finding a way to make it shit, this shit happen. My ultimate goal, like I said on episode, I believe that one was, that was with my man EJ, so that was episode 83. Uh, we have to be turning this shit into a conglomerate. And until I get it to that point, I'm not satisfied. So the shit that brings out the best in me is the work. Like, I never look at this shit like work just because I don't find that this shit is hard, difficult, or none of that. I look forward to doing this shit. I smile when I know I got episodes to record. I got a house to clean. I got some jerseys that came in, some jackets that came. I love that shit because this shit is beautiful. That is all predicated on how hard I'm going to go. And I know I ain't going to never let me down. Motherfucking no. Yeah, I hear that, bro. I feel the same way. I ain't gonna even BS you. I'm, I got a, a lot of things going on, a lot of things you got to stay on top of. Um, so definitely, the hustle is, is would be you know one thing, another another characteristic that we bring the be the best out of me, bro. Um, it's the challenge. It's the, the can I can do it. You feel me? Sky's the limit. If there's nothing holding me back, what I mean, there's no excuse for me not to go out and get it. You feel me? Um, all the information now that you know, we're, we're accessible to that we weren't accessible to back when we were coming up. You dig me? We were both kind of slightly before this. We were before the cell phone era. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember when we first started going out and uh, I'd be telling niggas, like, nigga, we was in a mix last night. Ain't no cell phones, ain't no cameras and none of that. I ain't got no pictures. Like, it wasn't that going on back then. Um, so yeah, man, you know the hustle definitely. You got you got to have a purpose, bro. That's that a purpose. You got to have a. Well, purpose. Funny you brought that up. Shout out to the BTG podcast. Did an episode with them, and we talked about that. And everybody does. I don't think everybody has a purpose. You know what I'm saying like everybody some people are just there to be the fuck up some people are just there just to be there so like we've had this conversation before we've had i'm sure <laughs> we've had this conversation before now I, I i don't all the way agree with that because even if you feel that person's there to be the fuck up or if that person was just there to be there to cause that situation to transpire or to instigate or to be an onlooker on who said they saw it whatever that was their purpose you feel me? They have everybody has purpose. You Co feel copy, okay, okay, copy. Everybody, I can go with you there then. Yeah, everybody I, has purpose, bro. Like for instance, the better, way, it, the better way to say that then should be, we don't all have a uh, passion. We don't all have this drive. We don't all have. We all uh, don't have. Yes, we all don't have drive and vision. That's copy. what I would say. Those two right there, drive. And vision. A lot Drive of and vision turn your purpose into an actual goal and all of that. Copy. Okay. Copy. My bad. You got it. Like they'll see, okay, they'll see the empty warehouse and not see that we could turn it into a event space or a nightclub. You know what I mean? Like everybody doesn't think big. They don't, they, you know, they're closed minded. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. We know this. Yeah. They, um, let's get back on the topic. But yeah, big everybody's not a big picture thinker. Big picture thinking is not something that we all have. Everybody doesn't have that vision, like you said, an empty warehouse. Yes, now sir. Uh, getting back to those things that bring out the best in you. What else would you say brings out the best in you? Because you said you got a list, you got a you got a whole my, bunch we'll, of things. We we'll go, we'll go. My children, my children, my children definitely bring the best out of me. Um, to see that I would like, you know, to be able to, you know, know I can provide a, a better lifestyle for them than you know how I grew up. I'm not saying that how I grew up was bad, but you know. Um, you be always able, want better for your kids. Yeah, copy. You know, we always want better for our kids. And just to, once you see them, you just want better for them. You want to be able to give them whatever they need to help develop them into whatever they're going to turn into. You dig what I'm saying? So, you know, when you see when you see your kids and you're playing with your kids or you're missing your kids, you know what I'm saying? Those are things that are motivating. You want to make sure that you provide a stable foundation so that you can enjoy them and that they can grow. You know what I mean? So that's definitely something that brings the best out in me. You know, it it it, it allows me to nurture, allows me to be carefree. You feel me? Um it it a lot it provides a lot of things, man. And and I'm grateful for it. You feel me? So definitely when I when I think about my children, um, that is that you know, there's something that that they're both some, you know, individuals that bring the best out in me. See, mine is kind of all based on the same thing is even if I go to if I go to any different answers, like, yes, yeah, obviously, you know, your kids be it, your mom, and your girl and all of those different things, you know. Uh, but for me, it all goes back to having the pressures of people looking at you to say, what are we doing? Where are we going? Where are you taking us type of thing? Because you driving a car, you hit at the table. If you the, uh, had a household and all of that, like. You're the person that everybody's looking to. So all of that does motivate you and all of that will bring the should bring the best out of you if you ain't succumbing and folding to those pressures in that position or if you look at it like it's pressure. I don't look at it like it's pressure just because that was always me. When I was nine, it was we gonna sell these bean pies after Juma, then we're gonna go hit the barbershops and see if we can get this money. My thing has always been find a way to make it happen. So <laughs> I can't even really say that I got anything else that will really bring the best out of me because I think uh, the best part of the best part of me is the discipline and the shit like that. My dad taught me as a kid where you have to go get it and you cannot have us in a situation where it's like, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to get it? And where are we going to get it from? You gonna always have to be able to figure that shit out. You wanted to have a family. You wanted to have kids. You wanted to have responsibilities. You wanted to be the nigga that people call. You want to be the brother who people turn to, then you got to be sturdy. You got to be stable. You got to be able to make shit happen. And I never look at that shit like pressure. I just look at that shit like that's just part of the game. And I love it. I love when all of that shit happens. Right. Responsibility brings the best out of you. you Maybe that could be it then. Yeah. 
I mean, that's 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 what I feel. I mean, from listening to everything you said, I feel the same way. Responsibility. That's what I was getting from it. Responsibility brings the best out of you. You Shout know, out to my mom just brought her up and she texted me. <laughs> that's out to the mother. <laughs> that's, that's like that's that's definitely a a good one to go on responsibility, man. You know? How would you say? those things that bring the best out of you, how have those affected you now going into all of the businesses and the different things that you got going on? How have those, how has that helped with all of those different things? Well, to start off with adversity, because again, you know, we can't handle things the way that we feel all the time. This is business. You know, you don't want to be known as the big mad black guy. You know, nobody wants to work with the big mad black guy. You feel me? So, at the, so at the end of the day, you, you have to be mindful that, you know, how you carry it. And then another thing, you know, how to receive it, not how, how you carry it and give it, but how you receive it. Because again, you know, you can't be frowning. You can't just walk away. You can't huff and puff. If this is what you do, this is just examples, you know, is, is business is not personal. So at the end of the day, you also got to be able to sit here and listen to things you don't want to hear. Um, prime example, I'll give an example. Um, say, you know, I have a cleaning business. Shouts out to Heartthrob Cleaning Services, LLC. If your establishment isn't becoming to you, you ought to be coming to me. Um, say, example, we, we cleaned the kitchen. I cleaned the kitchen. I don't, you know, I, I rarely clean, but say I cleaned the kitchen. I know I cleaned the kitchen, right? And, you know, you might get a customer that calls back and say, okay, well, you know, they, they weren't pleased on, you know, they don't think the kitchen was clean. You dig what I'm saying? And in your mind, you know, you clean the kitchen. You feel me? So at the end of the day, you cannot catch feelings and, and, and be aggressive um, when handling the situation. Um, One of them things that I took is you can't always be mad at somebody's opinion. Mm -hmm. You can't always be so defensive when somebody gives you their opinion. If somebody turn somebody tunes into the podcast, like I've stated this before, but you know, niggas turn niggas turn new listeners all the time. Somebody told me like the rundown is long in the beginning. You should try to shorten that up. And I tell them, okay, I, I mean copy, that's what you think. The reason that my rundown is that long in the beginning is because I want to be able to show you that this stuff is not that hard for you to be able to accomplish. I'm not doing anything that is super special to make these things happen. It's just relationship building, having a good name and a good rapport with people that they want to work with you, that they want to fuck with you. And that anybody could be able to do that if you can do those same things. It ain't hard for you to be able to obtain these certain little steps and things that I've done. And when somebody gives you something, the first thing that you got to do is take that criticism and say, is there some way I can use this to get better? Not just go, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. She don't know what she's talking about. She ain't got no podcast. She don't got no business. How they know? How he know? Everybody's not coming from a place where they're looking to demean you and belittle your situation. Some people is, and you know what those people is when you get into those conversations you know you could tell what the vibe is when you're talking to them and some people you know like this motherfucker genuinely has my best interest at heart this motherfucker ain't never been on no bullshit with me you know what i'm saying we got that type of relationship and i know if they telling me this that or whatever i need to listen for me it'd be like i don't respect the way a lot of people move so when you giving me those different opinions it's like if i don't respect the way that you move then i ain't even listening to that shit but if i do respect the way that you move if i fuck with the way that you got your movement going or the way that you running whatever it is that you're doing you could be selling fucking water ice or hot dogs on the corner. If I fuck with the way that you moving these hot dogs, mm -hmm. I can listen to the shit that you're telling me. Because it's right. not about what you're doing, what's the scale that you're doing it on. It's just about the individual and the person and what you get out of that. Right. No doubt. Um, I, I, I agree with that 100%, Hank. Um, it's not more about what you say. It's about how you're moving. Um, especially in what we do. Because words are funny, bro. You can have two actors look at each other deeply in their eyes and, man, I love you. And you can think it was the best scene ever, but you know at the end of the day, it's bullshit. It don't mean nothing. No. It's nothing behind that. It's just it words. Moved it moved you, but it was nothing behind it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if I look at you and tell you I love you, then you know we got 30 years of this. So right. you know if I'm telling you I love you, you know that that's real. That's what it is. My actions have shown that. Right. My presence has shown that over the course of the years. Like you're saying, that's the difference in that. No. No. I told you I love you. You ain't even say it back. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought you were taking the, your, your point for, this, for your story, brother. I, you know I love you, brother. Go, you call it a double back. entendre in the business, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, thought you was, I thought that was a part of it with, you know. Yeah, well, now we're going to go a little bit into we're going to go a little bit into what you got going on now. Tell me this. What has been the biggest adversity 
Since diversity is what brings the best out of you, what's been the biggest uh, adversity, to, adverse situation, should I say, that you've had to face doing poetry and laughter? Then let, let's lead that into talking about poetry and laughter. No doubt, man. Um, thank you for that, man. Shouts out to everybody that has performed or been a part of Poets and Laughter. Um, I have it the last Saturday of every month. Um, we're taking off this month, this September. We're taking off. We'll be back at the end of October. Uh, October 29th, if I'm not mistaken. It's going to be a masquerade thing. Check out for that. Make sure you cop your tickets. Um, but the, 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 I would say the biggest adversity that I had in dealing with people, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not, it's not saying everybody, so, you know, it's not saying everybody, but dealing with people when it comes to the, the, the actual um, place that you're having it, the, 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 the event space, um, to dealing with um, liquor, to dealing with food, to make, to selling tickets, you know what I'm saying? And being able to get these things done because a lot of times all these things aren't being done just by you, you assign people to do it. So, you know, just being able to think or just thinking like, oh, everything's going to run smooth. I mean, I've done this for so long that everything should run smooth, but every time I have it, it's always something new. You dig me? And it's always somebody, it's always a person um, I feel and that, that tries to um, get in the way. But like I said, I just I just know I don't overreact and I just know that I, I got this. One, no, one monkey don't stop no show. You feel me? Something that you said before, I think this might've been uh, before, we hit, before we hit record, where you stated, uh, poetry and laughter. Poets and laughter is something that you started from nothing. And being able to build those different things from nothing. Let's talk about that a little bit because I started all my shit from, from nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the podcast. Well, it started the podcast from nothing. Uh, we started doing it with OLF. We was both on OLF. Shout out to OLF. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying these different branches now have been from me just having an idea having a thought and having that work ethic. Like I had 25 guests and two radio stations lined up before I had a name or a logo. So talk about that, building those different, those different things that you got going on from nothing. Um, yeah, man. So at the end of the day, I've, I, it, before I did Poets and Laughter, I've never um, promoted a show. I've never hosted a show. Um, I've never been, to, you know, I mean, I, I didn't really know poets. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really wasn't in into the game prior. A little bit I was. I we were on OLF. Um, you know, I was getting in, into that, um, meeting, you know, artists and blah blah blah. But when I did Poets of Laughter, I was that was like me really, that was like my first time really doing it. Um, I had a a homie at the time, it was called uh, Authors and Poets. Uh shouts out to uh, the one eye creep. Um, he's a a comedic poet. Um, and basically we were going to do it. This is, this is when the pandemic started. Um, we were going to do it because he was dropping a book. So, you know, I knew him from school, from the neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to help promote that. And, and actually did the platform set a platform for that. Um, and he said he was with it. So we did it. We did it. It was like December. We had a good turnout. And this is like, I guess people was tired of being in the house. People came out, they enjoyed themselves. And, um, Kareem the Dream, um, he's the owner of Cash Studios. He was like, man, y'all could do this drone every month. Y'all should do this drone every month. So then I looked at Miles, he was like, cool. So we started We started doing a drink, probably like three to four shows. But again- So you that know, was December, 2020, correct? Copy. copy. All right. And now we run, in every, we run the last Saturday out of every month. Every uh, month. All right, where can people purchase tickets for the, for the latest Poets and Laughter? Um, basically, you can po- purchase the tickets through me. You can cash at me at dollar sign daddy r o ro dollars d o l l a z. Make sure you include um, the first and last name of the people that you're buying tickets for, so that you can be added to the admissions list just in case you lose your ticket. I told my man change that cash at name a minute ago, y'all. <laughs> and you'll be able to get them. You'll be able to get them from the artist as well. The artist will also have tickets as well. So if there's any artists that, you know, once the artist list comes out uh, to the public that, you know, they'll be selling tickets as well. So you also can go out and support the artists. Um, How do they apply to get on the next show? 
Uh, you got you to gotta DM me. You got to DM me because, I mean, everybody wants to get on once they see it because the vibe is good. That's a crazy vibe. But anyway, um, you can DM me at official underscore CEO dot RO um, and let me know that you're interested um, in participating um, with Poet and Poets and Laughter. Um, we're growing. So, you know, I get a lot of people. And then to narrow it down because really – you only can get in about 13, 14 artists. And that's just being generous. When you start putting it together and people you know, the, the list, you know, fills up really quick, you know? So definitely get at me. All right, now um, let's go into Heartthrob. What made you What made you decide to go into the cleaning business? Um, well, I was, I was incarcerated. I was incarcerated from 2009 to 2015. And basically, um, while incarcerated, I was already thinking of ways that I was going to make money. I knew I didn't really want to come out and work for anyone. I knew I would have to in the beginning, but I, did, I already knew that I wasn't going to want to work for anyone. For me to um, exceed the wealth that I wanted, um, I, I could do it my way. You dig what I'm saying? So I already plotted and planned on what could I do? Because I know I didn't have a lot of money. I wouldn't have a lot of money. What could I do? What was a business that I could do that I would like to do that I can make money at? Um, and it was cleaning, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I decided, you know, when I came home that I was going to work and start my cleaning business. And I did. Um, in 2015, June 2015, I started Heartthrob Cleaning Services LLC. And it's been on ever since. Copy that. Last but certainly not least. Now let's talk about the CEO World Experience. When somebody tunes in to the CEO World Experience and they see hype on episode five, uh, rocking a very uh, fresh custom hustle sweatsuit custom on that hustle. episode, actually. Snakes was matching. I had the whole situation was late. I was fly that day. Um, oh, what, what is it that they could expect to get from the CEO row experience? Oh, man, you, you're going to get a lot of artist or guest appreciation. We want to really, whoever I have as a guest, I really want the audience to be able to get that person, not whoever they portray, not the business person, you know, I want them to get, you know, I want to give the flowers to the guests. I want the flowers to be given to the guests. Um, I want to be able to show the city of Philadelphia that there are a lot of people out here that are doing the right thing. And maybe you need to connect. If you're interested in going down any one of these lanes, you are interested in connecting with these people. This is tune into the CEO row experience. So you can, you know, you can connect and network and possibly get away from the BS that your life is bringing you. You dig me? What is the difference in the CEO role experience from doing OLF podcasts? I know you told me you wanted to have it more so like a TV show more Correct. than a podcast. So Correct. what would you say has been, again, we're going to hit the same theme, the biggest adversity from going from podcasting to a studio show, basically, like a TV show? It wasn't really that hard for me. It was really more based on my personality and what I would want. So basically, I, my, the CEO role experience is set up with four 30-minute segments. Um, we speak, I speak to the guest for 20 minutes, in-depth topics or getting to know the guest. And then the last 10 minutes of that segment, I have my DJ shots out the to tour at National Underground Radio. Um, we spend the, if it's an artist, if it's a musician. Definitely shout out to my man T. We spend, we spend the music during that 10 minute segment. And we also flash the flyers from our sponsors, as well as um, anyone that would like to, you know, pr you know pay for promo. Um, that's the time that we do it. So basically, it's like a commercial, commercial break. Go use the bathroom, get something to eat, do whatever you got to do, and then come right back with the CEO row experience. And now, one more time before we uh, before we close down episode eighty five, appreciate you coming on. Also, let them know though how can they get inside those different commercial breaks on the CEO row experience. You can hit me at CEO row experience on IG again at CEO row R O experience. Um, and you can let me know that you're interested in, um, you know, running promo on my show. Uh, again, it's $50 a month. Um, every time my show airs, your advertisement will air on my show. Um, again, that's at CEO Row Experience. Drop your uh, information, your name, and definitely have a flyer. If you don't have a flyer, I charge $10 extra uh, to create a flyer for you. Um, but definitely get, get at me with that. You dig what I'm saying? Um, support, you know. Black business support black business. You dig what I'm saying? We all growing together. We shining together. A lot of people see my show, whether they like me or they don't, they watching. Copy that. Appreciate you coming on, bro. 
That was episode 85. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.